Continuing 8.6, uh, solving exponential and logarithmic equations, I am now on example 4. And it's saying that you are cooking uh, alicia, an Ethiopian stew. Never heard of it before. But when you take it off the stove, its temperature is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The room temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the cooling rate of the stew is 0 0.046. How long will it take to cool the stew to uh, to a serving temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit? To solve this, we need to know Newton's law of cooling. And here it is. A whole bunch of T's with little subscripts there. That is 212. All right, its temperature is uh, 212. That's the original temperature. There it is, 212. The TR and the TR there is 70 because it's saying the room temperature so that's what that little R stands for room temperature so I have what the uh, uh, when you take it off the stove so I guess the original temperature there is 212 and the temperature of the room which is 70 so I can fill that in also know the rate that's telling us that it's 0 .046 so we have that so when I go and fill this in it's saying how long will it take to cook when it's 100. That's telling me the final is 100 there. So when I fill this all in, here's what I have. I can do 212 minus 70 to combine that together to get 142. And this is now like an actual equation that we can solve using logarithms and exponentials. I need to get the base all to itself. Well, in this problem, the base is E, so I need to somehow get E all by itself. So in order to do that, I subtract 70 on both sides, so 100 minus 70 is 30. So I have 30 equals 142 E to the negative 0 0.046. Well, that means I need to divide both sides by 142, because remember I said you need to get E all by itself. So when I divide both sides by 142, I end up with 0.2113 equals e to the negative 0 0.046. So, we can't use logs here because we're talking about e, but we can use natural log. The opposite of e is the natural log. So the key here is if they're opposites, that means I multiply both sides by the natural log. Well, natural log and e cancel each other out, so all I have left over on that side is negative 0 0.046t and the natural log of 0.2113 on that side. So, to solve for t, I would divide both sides by negative 0.046, and that cancels out over there, giving us 33.79. So we find out that t is roughly 33.79. Example 5. Um, this is actually an easier example than you think. When the logs are the same on both sides, log base 3, log base 3, when you have the log with the same base, you can forget that they even exist. You can forget that the log with the base 3 even exists and just solve what's inside the parentheses. So basically all I have to do is do 5x minus 1 equals x plus 7. So to do that, I combine the x's on both sides to get a 4x e minus 1 equals 7. I add 1 to both sides to get 4x equals 8, and I can divide both sides by 4 and get x equals 2 as my answer. Example 6, um, I can rewrite um, these right here. I can rewrite them as um, an exponential one. So whatever the base is, I basically take each of these sides to the fifth power. So there's that's the fifth power, and there's that's the fifth power. According to our properties that we learned, these two, 5 and log the fifth, cancels out. So all I have left on that side is 3x plus 1 equals 5 squared, and 5 squared is 25. So to solve that equation, that's very simple. We just subtract 1 on both sides, so I get 3x equals 24. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 8 as my answer. Example 7, this is using the properties that we talked about on the last section, right? Since this is addition, I can combine these two logs together by doing multiplication. So, uh, but before we do that here, um, this is something that they just uh, had me remember here. When there is no base in a log, the base in that log is 10. This is actually very important that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of. Um, 
if there is no base ever in a log, if it just says log right beside it, the base is 10. That is a common log. That is something that's very common for you guys to keep in mind when you're doing these problems. So notice how I rewrote everything with a little 10 there because that's the base in this problem. So I need to make sure you guys are aware of that before doing the problem. But anyway, now looking at it after realizing that that base that's not there is 10 with that addition sign, going to our properties, I can put that together through multiplication, and then I can distribute that 5x through, get 5x squared minus 5x. Now, just like the last problem, whatever that base is, right, which is a 10, right, I can basically put this all to the 10th power on this side and this side. So 10, the log base 10 cancels out, so all I have left on this side is 5x squared minus 5x, and 10 squared on the other side. Well, 10 squared is 100. Well, because I have an x squared, that's a quadratic. So what I can do with a quadratic is I can push everything onto one side by subtracting that 100, and I can set it equal to 0. Well, I can see that they all have something in common. They all have a 5 in common, so I can distribute a 5 out of each of those items. And when I do that, I'm left with x squared minus x minus 20. Can you think of two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 20 that also add together to give me negative 1? I know I can. Negative 5 and positive 4, right? Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So when I go to solve this, I set each of these equal to 0. And when I do that, I get x equals 5 and x equals 4 as my answers. And once again, you can check them both. Plug in a 5 here, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 minus 1 is 4. 25 times 4 is 100. So it's log base 10, 100. So you can do log 100 divided by log 10 in your calculator, and you would get 2. You plug in a 4, you get 5 times 4 is 20, and that's 3. 4 minus 1 is 3, so 20 times 3 is 60, so log 60 divided by log 10 will also uh, give you the 2 there as well. So there's your homework. Um, this is the end of the chapter, so after you're done with this, I recommend you looking over the entire chapter, try to find some good examples, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and email me. Thank you for your time. Yarrr!